What do we hate? Maintenance. So today we're gonna to be going over my short maintenance plan and how I actually maintain my Onefinity machine. That's gonna be the ball screws, it's gonna be stuff with the router, it's gonna be stuff with the spoil board, it's gonna be every little thing. Shouldn't take more than 30 minutes. Let's jump right into it. All right, first up, we're actually gonna be looking into our router. And some of y'all might have spindles. If they're air-cooled, there's a few things here that might actually apply to you. But specifically for this Makita router, there are a few things that we really need to make sure are up to par on it. In order to do that, we need to take it off the Z-axis because later we are going to be going into the ball screw behind it. So it's gotta be out of there anyways. These two hex nuts, you're just going to want to remove these. Now for me, I've got the router Roman light installed, which means that you just need to be a little bit extra careful when you're removing that hex nut to make sure that you're not breaking this 3D printed part. But it's pretty straightforward and then we're just gonna slide the router out. Now I'm just gonna lower this so it's a little bit easier to take out. There we go. And voila, the router is free. All right, when you take off this assembly, you have your nut and you also have your collet. This is what is actually gripping the bit. The bit goes in, this goes around here, it tightens and it friction holds your bit in place. Now a few things can actually cause that so that your friction fit is not as good as it should be. Number one, that's gonna be dust. You still have dust that is shooting up in here and as it accumulates into these little slits, that means your bit is not getting as strong of a hold as it could. Normally people see that and they start really hammering down and tightening a lot more than they should on these and it causes these little hairline cracks right here at the very end of these slits. That's something that you need to look for just when you're doing your regular maintenance, just making sure that you don't see any hairline cracks. If you don't, you're perfectly fine, but make sure to look for them on the outside as well as the inside. Now, when your router is running, specifically this Makita, it is air-cooled. What that means is it is sucking air in from the top and it is pushing it out the bottom in order to cool the router down so that it doesn't overheat. What that does is as you're cutting pieces, that's creating dust. And if you don't have good enough dust collection, what that's doing, this air that's forcing down is pushing the dust away. It's getting airborne. And then this is sucking it back into the router. If you're not spraying out your router, that dust will accumulate and it will eventually catch on fire. So regardless of if this is 100 hours in or if you're just doing a two hour carve, I would blow out the top of your router every single time as well as blowing out inside of here to make sure that your collet isn't getting junked up with all kinds of dust and making it so that you're not able to grip your bit, causing your bit to slip. If your router just magically dies on you one day, it's probably because your brushes are worn out. So there's two little windows right here and right here on either side of the router, which is also a reason that we needed to take it out of the Z axis to do this. But you're just gonna grab a screwdriver and pop these out. So as you can see right here, there's a little bit of a dip at the very end of this piece of carbon. What that's doing is, is rubbing against components inside of the router itself. And over time, this will grow shorter, just like a pencil eraser. So if all of a sudden during the middle of a carve, your router just all of a sudden stops working, that is why, because all of this material is gone. Now, these are just little blocks of carbon and can easily be bought for just a few dollars online. I'll try and find a link and put those below. This amount right here is still perfectly fine for what I'm doing and I'll probably replace those next month, but right now I'll just slide this back into the router, but I'll need to make sure that the other one has the same amount of wear on it as well. You can see that the second one is a little bit shorter than the other one and is actually approaching that little line. I don't know if you can see that on there. So I'm probably going to replace these sooner than I originally thought. So probably just order some on Amazon, send them over whenever they come in, just pop them in the router. But always make sure that you're checking your brushes. Now we're just gonna pop the collet back in and then put the collet nut, or whatever this thing's called, back onto the shaft and just leave a bit out of it for now. Now, let's go to the ball nut. There are four places that you really need to make sure that there's oil on it and then when Finney recommends that you just coat the entire thing in oil. What we're gonna do first is make sure that we blow off the area. Now, you can vacuum up everything, of course. Just make sure that you don't put your vacuum near your controller. What that's going to do is it can cause static electricity and, act and can actually harm the machine overall. So with me, I use compressed air over everything. Yes, my machine is still on. Yes, my router is still unplugged because we need the machine on so that we can jog it around during this process to make sure the oil is getting into everything. What you're gonna to want to do is use this 
This is three in one oil. That is what Winfinity recommends that you use on this. So we are going to be going ahead, cleaning out all those ball nuts and then flooding everything with three in one oil. But what I'd like to focus on this one is instead of these two, there is one right here and then one right here that we need to address to make sure that they are getting properly oiled as well as cleaned. So put down a towel. I'm mainly just doing that for these two places that I'm gonna be oiling and that is because it is directly over my spoil board. My main table that the machine itself is sitting on is made out of plywood, so I'm not worried about that there. But if your main table that your Onefinity is sitting on is made out of MDF, I would highly consider trying to either use, a, use plywood or really make sure that you're putting saran wrap down under the entire gantry or something so that, that oil is not seeping into your MDF because that will swell and gosh, MDF is the worst. It, it'll swell if you just sneeze on it wrong. So let's go ahead and oil this one. All right, Onefinity recommends just putting some oil all over this puppy and then running it up and down. We're gonna do that in sections, but essentially once we've gone past where the oil has gone, we're gonna put on some more, and we're really just gonna flood the entire thing. All right, next we are gonna be cracking into this. We're gonna be fully taking it off, which it has four screws. And then we are gonna be doing the same to the very end gantry blocks. And we are gonna be turning off the machine for this so that we can manually slide it over so that we can look and see what's actually happening in the ball nut itself on all three of those. So turn off the machine, take all three of those off, make sure they're clean, and then put them all back together. And then we'll do the oiling for the whole machine overall. So that whole process just took me 25 minutes uh, and the only reason is because I wanted to sit in one place and do it all instead of walking around the machine. I think that would have been a lot faster but yeah. So those two at the end, I've got a complete video on that. Not very difficult, it just takes a second. And then this one is sealed a little bit differently, I'm not sure why but I personally think it's protecting that a little bit better and I just dropped some oil in that. All right, so at this point, before I put oil on everything and make it all slippery, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the router into here and then get with all the oiling. So this is what they actually say to do. Uh, you get your three in one and you put it all over the rails. You're gonna put it all over the rails as well as all over the ball screws. And then you're gonna work the oil into the machine by jogging it back and forth. You're gonna do this with all of the axes. Axi? Axis? Axis? Ax yeah. You're gonna do it with all the parts. Then you're just gonna run it back and forth, make sure that it is getting into all the components. And by back and forth, I literally mean just like this, making sure that the oil is getting everywhere, covering all the parts. Holy sh Interesting. Well, this part right here mounts on top of this which is what holds the hose up a little bit further off the workpiece. And it looks like it just snapped off a little bit. So I'll get in touch with Rowdy Roman about that. He's super responsive. I'm sure he'll send something right over. But thankfully, that does not mean that we are down and out. Now, last thing, you just wanna make sure to wipe off all the excess oil. Some of the oil can actually get into these threads and as the machine's moving, it can fling oil onto your workpiece. So just make sure to go over it and get up any type of loose oil that you see. And that is complete. We are good to go on to leveling our waste board.
So I know that I didn't take off a ton of material with that. I'm about to do another one of my torture test videos and I know I'm gonna be scarring this up even more. And I just really wanna make sure that I had a nice level place to start from before jumping into that. You also might be saying, really every single month you're gonna be checking all those ball nuts. Well, that's something where this next portion of what I'm about to install on my machine is hopefully going to mitigate that and make it so that I'm not checking those every single month, but checking those every single quarter just to make sure. And what I'm going to do for that is install these little curtains. So I had my mother-in-law sew me up two of these little things. Uh, they are 48 by six inches. And what I'm gonna do, get these little adhesive alligator clips, put those on the very ends of the machine and then clip this into place. And hopefully that means that a lot of the shavings are not bouncing onto the ball screw, sitting there and then having the gantry just eat it up and shove it into the ball nut. Hopefully that's gonna help. I think it looks pretty great and I think it's actually gonna work pretty well too. So if you've got some random fabric at home and your mother-in-law will sew it up for you, go for it. Those clips I just got off of Amazon and I will put those in the description in case anybody's interested in doing something like this. But let's actually see if it works. If anybody has any other kind of maintenance that they do to their machine on a daily, monthly, you know, yearly basis, I would love to know that because I always wanna make sure that my machine is in tip top shape so that it is running as efficiently as possible and I'm not having to worry about any kind of variables. Right after the clip of this breaking, I got in touch with Rowdy Roman and I said, hey, I think I broke something. And he was like, oh no, Hamilton, you, you broke something? And he immediately sent me out this part. So this is all working great and I really appreciate it, Mr. Rowdy. On the other hand, we're two days in the future where I have completed one of my torture test videos. This should be 146 bottle openers, but they're not. And there's Purple Heart and Bloodwood in there and all kinds of beautiful stuff that cost hundreds of dollars. And uh, yeah, they're completely screwed. So I'm gonna sit around for like another 30 minutes and figure out how I'm going to remedy this. And I guess you'll see in like a week or two what I end up doing. I hope it's good. Cause I don't know. So yeah. Thanks for watching. Infinity Maintenance. Woo! CNC's woo! You know that CNC always stands for uh, Hamilton Makes Mistakes? That's what it stands for. Oh. Da 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 da. What will I do?